The Snowden disclosures published by Glenn Greenwald revealed that the United States and its partners, in secret, had set up a global system of surveillance. With the declared goal to collect, store, and analyze all electronic communications between human beings, to collect it all. The importance of the Snowden disclosures can hardly be overestimated because they give us a first-hand insight into the magnitude and operations of the state of mass surveillance today. When Snowden released all of this material, we started to see in fine-grained detail how the world of mass surveillance and targeted surveillance among the world's most powerful countries actually operates. And to me, this was uh, endlessly eye-opening. It still is, in fact. Even though the news has receded, uh, I think there is a lot of material yet to be digested, even that which has been released already to the public. It came out so quickly that it, it takes a lot of time to actually go through them one by one and understand what's happening. Uh, for me, it was an eye-opener in terms of really um, grasping firsthand what it looks like from the perspective of an operator within something like Canada's Signals Intelligence Agency or Australia's or New Zealand's or the UK or USA, uh, what it means to actually select a, an identifier, as they call it, maybe it's an IP address or something like a cell phone number or an IMEI number, something hard-coded into a device. Take that one identifier and go back in time and map out what someone was doing May 12, 2012, with whom they were communicating, what websites they were visiting, what they were purchasing. Uh, this is the world of mass surveillance, digital surveillance we live in today, and the capabilities that the most powerful actors in the world have access to today, uh, we now have a much better sense of thanks to uh, the disclosures of Edward Snowden. So what exactly do the Snowden disclosures reveal? What do they tell us about the global state of surveillance we are living under today? On the 5th of June 2013, in the first media report by Glenn Greenwald based on the disclosed material, The Guardian exposed a top-secret Pfizer court order, showing that the NSA had collected phone records from over 120 million Verizon subscribers in the United States. Up to that point, hardly anyone had ever seen a court order from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act court. The FISA court, as it is called, is one of the most secretive institutions, and it gives permission to the U.S. government to engage in electronic surveillance. Its rulings are automatically designated top secret, and only a handful of people are authorized to access its decisions. Under the order, Verizon was forced to hand over to the FBI and thereby to the NSA all the communication records of its customers. And what it showed was that the NSA was secretly and indiscriminately collecting the telephone records of millions of Americans. And because FISA court orders are top secret, Virtually nobody had any idea that the Obama administration was doing such a thing. I think the first story that we did um, on June 5th, 2013, about how the U.S. government had instituted a program to collect and store the lists of every single telephone call that Americans make to one another. Um, it shows the identity. Uh, you can identify who's speaking to whom for how long, where they are when they speak. That was just so simply shocking because it was a case not of the United States government spying on citizens of a hostile country or an adversarial government, but on its own population. And that showed the limitlessness of it, um, as well as the fact that it was all done in secret. So you had not just a threat to privacy, which obviously was represented by that story, but even more so in a sense a threat to democracy because how can you ha have meaningful elections and, and a process of selecting a leader if the most consequential acts 
are being implemented in total secrecy with no debate or even understanding on the part of the public. So I think that kind of set the stage for how all the other revelations were understood. The second media disclosure revealed the secret PRISM surveillance program. Under the PRISM program, the NSA had been collecting user data directly from the servers of nine of the largest tech and internet companies, including Microsoft, Yahoo, Google, Facebook, Apple, Paltalk, AOL, Skype, and YouTube. Not only do the NSA documents show the date when each of these companies joined the PRISM program, it also reveals the comprehensiveness of the data that has been collected, including emails, voice messages, texts, video chats, stored data, file transfers, and login details. It reveals the intricacy and depth with which these companies and the NSA have been working on these behind-the-scenes transactions. PRISM allowed the NSA to obtain virtually anything it wanted from tech companies that hundreds of millions of people around the globe were using as their primary means to communicate. This was further undercut by the revelation of another NSA program called X-Keyscore. Introduced in 2007, this program monitors, collects and stores all global online internet activity. X-Keyscore program that just show the comprehensive nature of what the NSA is collecting where enormous numbers of Google searches and browsing histories and buddy lists and emails and telephone calls um, are simply stored from around the world, billions and billions and billions added to this database every single month that are searchable and that are easily read and, and invaded at any time by the NSA with very little legal or regulatory restrictions. I think that was the story that turned it from a story of domestic spying that horrified Americans into a story of global spying that horrified the part of the world that regularly depends upon internet usage. Further disclosures revealed that the US intelligence agencies were siphoning off internet and telephone traffic that directly entered the United States through so-called choke points. Programs like Stormbrew exploit the fact that the vast majority of global internet traffic at some point flows through the US communications infrastructure, a byproduct of the central role the United States had played in developing the internet in the first place. This includes the direct tapping into submarine cables, as well as close collaboration between the NSA and US telecommunications companies. From there, there were some incredible stories about the US snooping on targets that were quite surprising. It was shown that the NSA was spying on the United Nations and the European Union headquarters. They were monitoring the cell phones of 35 world leaders, including those of Germany, France, Mexico and Brazil. Overall, 38 embassies have been targets of US spying operations, including those of US allies such as France, Italy, Greece, Japan and South Korea. It was revealed that the NSA ran a continent-wide surveillance program in Latin America, which seized web traffic and details of phone calls from the entire continent. And the collection of data was not merely confined to political targets, but also included spying on economic entities, human rights groups, activists and humanitarian organizations. Besides the comprehensiveness and secrecy of these surveillance practices, what the Snowden leaks also revealed was the extent to which the intelligence services of other countries have secretly collaborated with the NSA. This includes the members of the so-called Eyes in the Sky coalition that comprises five countries, namely the United States, Australia, Canada, New Zealand and the United Kingdom. Members of this coalition are explicitly exempted from NSA attacks, 
but they nevertheless spy on their own populations and on US citizens and then share that data with the NSA. But even beyond the Five Eyes Alliance, other countries have been shown to transfer intercepted data to the NSA on a regular basis. These include, amongst others, the intelligence services of Germany, France, Sweden, Singapore and Israel. The overall image that emerges about the current state of surveillance at a global level is stunning. It shows that the NSA and its partners have adopted as their institutional objective the collection of all electronic communication between every human being. That they have tried to set up a system that ensures that no communication can take place beyond the reach of their surveillance arm. And beyond the unimaginable magnitude of this clandestine spying system, the question that arises instantly is, what does this all mean? What does this mean to me as an average citizen? And what does this mean to the lives of our societies? This is the question I posed to Glenn Greenwald. One of the things that the US government said in response to the revelations um, was they tried to appease and assuage American citizens by saying to American citizens, look, if you're American, you need not worry because we have all these legal protections and constitutional guarantees in place so that if we want to actually read your emails or listen to your telephone conversations, we first need to go to a court and get a court order in order to do that. And it wasn't actually true, even that part of it, but think about what that's saying. What it's saying is if you're not an American citizen, in other words, if you're in the group of 95% of the people on the planet, we don't need any court order to read your emails or to listen to your telephone conversations. You have no legal protections and no constitutional guarantees against our snooping. And so when the US government is collecting billions, with a B, every single day, not every year or every month, but every day, of emails and telephone calls and browsing histories and Google searches um, from all over the world, and they're putting it into a database that's incredibly searchable, easily searchable, it means that your communications are susceptible at any moment to prying by a foreign government over which you exercise no control, no democratic influence or authority about how they conduct themselves or the ends to which they're putting this information. It essentially means that your privacy has been eliminated. And if you're lucky enough to be an American citizen, privileged enough to be an American citizen, you do have some legal protections, not nearly as much as they say, but some. But if you're not an American citizen, if you're one of the unlucky 95% of the people on the planet, you have none.